in the first century, after Jesus, people started writing their points of view about Jesus' life. These writings are what we call now the Gospels. There were more than 50 Gospels found, but unfortunately, they were contradicting each other. Some of them had a story and some had the opposite story, and there was no way to find which is the truth. Then in AD 325, the Roman Emperor Constantine I, also known as Constantine the Great, convened with a council of Christian bishops in the first council of Nicaea, and decided to choose one of the available stories about Jesus and consider it the absolute truth, and considered every other story a lie. So, they rejected all of the 50 plus Gospels available and chose only four, Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of Mark, Gospel of Luke, and the Gospel of John. And until now, they don't teach you in schools and in church that there are much, much more information that you can read and decide for yourself what makes more sense to you. They forced their version of the religion on you and you should accept it as a fact without being able to use your brain to judge. They are hiding the truth from you and you don't care. To give you an example, there is evidence that among the earliest Christians, Judas did not have a negative reputation. Judas was seen as an apostle in good standing after the death of Jesus. Even the Gospel of Judas Iscariot itself was found in Nekah Hammadi, carbon dated and proved authentic, yet not added to your Bible officially, because it says that Jesus didn't die, and Judas Iscariot misled them to crucify someone else to help Jesus escape. As I mentioned in my video on the Gospels, there were initially many different Christianities, and it took many centuries before the dominant version stamped out all the other versions, which it considered to be heresies. Remember, although it started in the 1st century CE, Christianity didn't really take off until the 4th century CE, when it became the dominant religion of the Roman Empire. This means that the earliest date for any of the Synoptic Gospels is 70 CE. Most scholars do place Mark somewhere just shortly after 70 CE, and then Matthew and Luke Acts somewhere around 10 years later. Q, if it did exist, would be placed before 70 CE, perhaps as early as the year 40. John, on the other hand, is usually placed last, around the year 100 CE. For example, Mark has Jesus hanging on the cross in pain, shouting as he dies, whereas John has him calmly making deep statements and then dying in a very serene way. The Gospel of Thomas is one of many other non-canonical Gospels that still exist. That's right, we have dozens of other Gospels beyond just the four that made it into the New Testament. Some scholars posit the existence of a Thomasine community and a Johannine community within early Christianity. The followers of Thomas saw the resurrection as being more of an act of spiritual enlightenment, whereas the followers of John saw it as being more of a factual, bodily resurrection. This would explain why John's Gospel paints the Thomas character as being the infamous Doubting Thomas, which just goes to show there was much disagreement among early Christians on how to understand Jesus. In fact, even the most conservative Christian scholars will admit that it took hundreds of years before all the various so-called heresies were stamped out and the more standard form of Christianity that we know today took hold. I explained to simple, you see, this Roman Catholic Bible has got 73 books inside. True or false, Professor? True. 73. The book that you are using, the authorized King James Version is the basis of that book that you have there, has got 66 books. Difference of seven. This book, the Roman Catholic Bible, preceded yours, the Protestant Bible. It had seven extra books. You threw it out, the Protestant world threw it out. The book of Maccabees, the book of Judith, the, the book of Tobias. Seven books you threw out from what your canon as the word of God. But the fact is, there's still so many different versions of the Bible. It's like, which one? And who determined that certain books need to be taken out? Right? There is, there's so much when it comes to the Bible. And if you guys watching this have done any sort of study of the Bible, you'll see that there are certain parts of the Bible that talk about and reference things that say that, okay, this is scripture, but when you look through the Bible, you don't find any of those references that they're talking about. So it's like, okay, well, 
are they talking about a scripture that was removed or, or, or what is this? You know, what's going on here, right? And there's there, there's countless people now, you'll find videos online saying that I think these books uh, should have been incorporated in the Bible, like the book of Enoch and things like that, because uh, the Bible actually quotes the book of Enoch and the book of Enoch isn't in the Bible. So what happened with that? The Gospels themselves cannot prove the authenticity of the story because all of the Gospels are authentic, all of them are very old, and yet all of them contain contradicting stories about Jesus' life. Why only four are correct and the remaining 50 plus are all wrong? If church officials are hiding 90% of the Gospels from us, to me, that is very, very suspicious. Because if I'm not doing anything wrong, I will have nothing to hide. Who decides which is correct and which is not? Who decides who God really is? Who invented the current Christian belief? Is it Jesus or Constantine in the first council of Nicaea? Is it Jesus or the church leaders? Why can't we decide for ourselves? Check out this verse from Quran. الذين آتيناهم الكتاب يعرفونه كما يعرفون أبناءهم وإن فريقا منهم لا يكتمون الحق وهم يعلمون الحق من ربك فلا تكونن من الممترين. Those whom we have brought the scripture recognize Muhammad as they recognize their own children, but indeed group of them do conceal the truth while they know that truth is from your Lord, so never be of the skeptics.